I regretted closing my first rental because the tenant troubled. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in an ideal real estate world, the tenant will pay the rental and then in good faith, continue paying the rental through the rest of the contract and then after that, extend the tenancy. But of course, we have heard of real estate oral stories where tenants don't pay their rental and then they don't even pay on time. And then when it comes to vacating the property, they leave the property in a mess and in a trash and the landlord then have to spend extra money to refund and put up the property into good condition for a new tenant and for advertising. So today we're going to go through memory lane and look back at my first rental deal in 2016 where I think I was quite fortunate because one of my neighbors he had a property and there's an office nearby so he got my contact through the flyers that I distributed in my neighborhood. So we met up and then to take photos and videos and then after that to list the property online. So his property I think was quite fortunate that the property, the office was a fully furnished unit and it was very nicely fully furnished and had a very good view from the manager's room and also from the common area. And in a few days, I received an inquiry. So the prospective tenant, they wanted to view the property. Then I think the next day, then the tenant made an offer. So as usual, there was a few negotiations back and forth and finally the rental was agreed. So then I proceeded to get some more information from the tenant and the tenant, it was a company. So of course, there's nothing wrong with the company wanting to rent an office unit. So I did some background check and you can of course do some checks on the company, the profile on SSM, which I did a video previously. I'll put the link above or below. So after getting the information about the company, I found that hey, the company, they very newly established. It was only, I think, like three months or maybe like even less than a year. So then again, of course, it's nothing wrong with a new company being established and they need to rent a property for their business operations. So anyway, they expressed an interest and then the rental was already agreed and the landlord was okay with the tenant profile and background. So both parties, they signed the agreement to rent or the booking form and then the tenant also paid the advance rental and the tenancy and stamping fee. Then on handover day, when the landlord wanted to give the keys, to my surprise, the tenant, they wanted to give the deposit, the balance deposit, security deposit, and the utility deposit in cash. So of course, when it comes to payment, nothing is better than receiving and giving in cash, where you can actually, you know, smell the money and touch and feel that money and authentic cash. And if I can remember correctly, the rental was 2005. So the deposits, it was two months security deposit and one month utility deposit. So 2005 rental that works out to 7,005 total. So of course, in some circumstances, 7,005 in cash is a very, very small amount. But 7,005 in cash and, you know, it's very thick. And also we didn't have a cash register to count the money. So on the spot, you know, we count 7,005 in cash. So of course the landlord, he was happy with receiving his deposits and also in cash and the tenant got to rent the property and I also got to close my first deal. Then one month passed and then I received a call from the landlord. Apparently the tenant had not been responding to the landlord's messages and calls. So the landlord visited the property and found that it was empty and the tenant had disappeared. But thankfully, the landlord had extra set of keys or spare keys. This is something for landlord to take note. Don't give all your keys and access card to the tenant. Make sure you have a spare set with you in case of emergency purposes, such as this for an example. And thankfully for this landlord, all the furniture that came with the rental, it was still there in the property, still in good condition when they first rented it a month back. So of course, the landlord was sad and disappointed that now there are no tenant for the remaining 11 months and 11 months rental so that works out 2005 times 11 is 27,500 in rental but at least the landlord still had the 7,005 deposit for the short term period so these are the two red flags when doing rental properties or deals number one if you are suspicious about the profile of the tenant make sure to do proper and thorough check. Secondly, if the tenant wants to give the deposit or make payment in cash, just be extra careful and take extra precautions because you never know, maybe the tenant want to rent a property and then they have all this cash they need to use for money laundering purposes. So thanks for watching and if you have any questions about rental properties or in real estate or rental deals, leave your comments below. And I also did an ebook on real estate which I also put the links in the description below. And if you learned something from today's video, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more real estate, investment, finance and home tips.